most important question perhaps on this entire ordeal here. Will Rivers and Harden <laughs> blow a 3-0 lead? Yes. Yes, I am on board with it. They I'm will blow it. They will Let's blow it. it. He's going to blow the first 3-0 lead. If you had to pick one <laughs> coach from the, our generation and one player from this generation to architect a 3-0 blown lead, would it not be those two? Yeah, most likely. Wow. Like, as far I, as I, far, I, though, yeah. And if they make it, Miami's going to beat them unless they get injured. But yeah. Embiid's thumb is a concern. Obviously, if Embiid is healthy, I don't think it is a problem, but Only I don't know how bad his thumb is. Only stop the Celtics from winning from this point out. Unless Giannis becomes arguably the second greatest player of all time this year, that's the only way he gets past the Celtics. It's possible. Chris oh, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely possible. So um, you're picking the Celtics to win the conference? Yeah, unless they get hurt. Today we're featuring Steve. He is uh, an NBA junkie and he has a lot of bold predictions about the NBA. So today we're just going to talk about the NBA, April 27, 2022, and about the playoffs and it's going to let it fly. All right, let's do, let's do a rapid fire section here. So tell me <laughs> what you think about first the Nets, Nets and Celtics. What are your thoughts? Uh, April 27th after today. Game one, I- after game Go one, on. I bet on a sweep and a five game and closure because the sweep. odds were just too good to pass up. <laughs> sweep was impressive. And- I, I saw a six game series. I did not see a sweep. Um, Kevin I said Durant. Five after the first game, maybe a sweep because to me it was like, no, the first game was the one of five they were supposed to they win. They were definitely supposed to win game one. <laughs> they were definitely supposed to win game one. Now, Kyrie, again, you know, we're not going to get an all Kyrie right here, but yeah. the bottom line is, is he, he has these amazing games where he's unstoppable. And then what do you do the other three games? You know, Blue like he's an average Terry. defender. Yeah. Yeah. It's the peaks so, and valleys thing. Yeah. And, and he's an average defender. So it's like, if you're not producing, what are you really I bringing heard, to the table? I forget who said this, um, but I, it was the greatest assessment I think I heard thus far without being like overly dramatic or like overly um, righteous or corrective. And that was Kyrie Irving doesn't put in the work off the court to sustain the consistency and the peaks that you see offensive and defensively through 82 games. And here's what he meant by that. He meant Kyrie can play D, but it all breaks down over 82 games. Like when he showed up against the Sixers, he was one of the best defenders on the court. He was excellent in game one. I thought he had some nice plays. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see those 60 point outbursts. Like when he destroyed Charlotte earlier in the year, he went for 60, I think. But then really think back to all the years adding up to now. And it was like, that makes perfect sense. And I think he knows that, which is why it comes down to, I need to work out more in the off season, which I don't want to do, or I need to take more games off so that the games I show up are only the great ones. And then it's people hard, can that's give hard me to the, prove. the, the the, that's um, hard to prove, but Jim that's Brown, his Isaiah record. Thomas treatment. We'll yeah. talk about the what ifs, yeah, and the lack of, and appreciate more of that than what really happened, and actually yeah. hold you accountable to what you did do. No, you know he's, he's a, yeah, he's a peak and valley guy. Now, KD got KD had a bad first three games. He did step up in game four, but you know, KD yeah. is. I don't know. I, I believe that Boston think, um, is the best. But what's that? You know what's weird about me uh, in watching what happened to KD? And I'm not saying he lost a step in like the way, you know, you're no longer an all-star. Because even if he was as good as he is now and at 20 and played 15 years, he would still be a Hall of Famer. But he's not what he used to be in – like the, he's not KD from OKC. KD from OKC would have got a game. 
Like, like he's not 25 anymore. Okay. Like he's 33 years old. He's taking some breaks on defense. Yeah. Um, it's going to happen. And KD, as you said, doesn't hit the weight room enough. Yeah. So like, he, like he is the exception to, I'm only going to play basketball to get better at basketball, make it to league. But remember, he's the most agile seven footer we've ever seen. Best ball handling seven footer we've ever seen. And he's a seven footer. So you can get away with it at that Kevin point. Durant or Larry Bird, who are you <laughs> drafting? Who? Kevin Durant or Larry Bird. See, that's tricky now. And that's what I was getting at why LeBron was better than Larry Bird. Because <laughs> that was an easy question for me to answer. I'm taking LeBron all day. But Larry Bird, if I'm starting an organization, I might take Bird first. Because to me, they're going to make open shots just as much. Just one guy's going to make my team better. Because again, I'm if you sub Larry Bird for Kevin Durant on OKC, they win a championship earlier. He probably would have, he probably would have punched <laughs> Russell Westbrook in the face a few times. I, I, I don't know if that's a good. <laughs> um, well, no, because what would have been great about that is you have the, like you would have had the two biggest hustlers all in the entire league on the same team. <laughs> You'd be like, Russ, go cut. I got the ball handling. I, I, let me, let me control it. He, he would be like, he'd be like Jokic combined with Durant, you know, <laughs> combined with Curry. He would just be bombing. Um, but, but I do think it's unfair. Like I'm, I think there's a lot of Durant slander the last two days of the, and that's what I was getting at with the baseball thing. Like what I hate about baseball on the flip side annoys me about this whole, cause everybody's jumping on the bus driver argument. There's no, there's no bus driver on an NBA team. He won two like MVPs stopped, in the finals. Stop it. No, that yeah. stopped in the Jordan era. Like, yeah. that's what I was getting at before. That's alpha dog. Teams win championships. The worst team that ever won a championship was LeBron James's team. Like, like that was the worst team that ever won a chip. I've seen oh. worse teams get there, like Jason Kidd's Nets and Allen Iverson Sixers were obviously worse than LeBron James's Cleveland team that won. But bad teams don't win championships. So I don't want to hear this bus driver talk about championship level teams, because like we talked about before, you know, you're a contender when any player can go down. And the media rhetoric is look at how many games they won without you. All you need to do is let the media talk that garbage, go back into your locker room and everybody smile at each other and be like, yo, buy in because we're here now. As long as the media thinks you guys can win without me, that means we could win this year. Yep. Now, KD, yeah, I would, I would take Bird. That was just, that was just a random question. So, I think the Celtics are amazing. I think them and the Bucks are going to have. I think that's going to be the, going to decide the East. But Miami does look dope. Trey Young did not have a good series, um, at all. Kind of took a step back from last year. But Miami's got you talk about dogs. They got. They got P.J. Tucker, who, by the way, pushed Kevin Durant around in the Western Conference Finals three years ago. Remember that? When uh, Rockets and Warriors, right? He pushed <laughs> why, that dude around. Why does P.J. Tucker blow over anytime somebody brushes by him the wrong way? Listen. You listen. can literally run into that guy at 150 miles an hour and he wouldn't budge. But I never see anybody hit the ground like with the touch of a feather and fly across the lane <laughs> and draw a call. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because he's a dog. He is, he is a guy that will get right in the middle of any brawl, but he's only in the league for his defense and his hustle and flopping is now part yeah. of that, like it or not. It's artistic when a tough yeah. guy does it. Well, now, when yeah, Big no, Baby, know, know. listen, when Big Baby Davis did it, it's because he was a <laughs> pussy. Okay, not, not because <laughs> he, he was doing it. You no, know it's artistic, like flopping was in the '90s. Because yeah. again, if you read that article I sent you yesterday, yeah. I agree with Gilbert. The one quote Gilbert Arenas gave in there, where he was like, "Yeah, he's like, what annoys me about the older generation's takes is they call fouling somebody like." In his example, I would compare it to an NFL receiver getting hit over the middle, yeah. but that's what he was getting at. He was like, you guys call hard fouls defense when you're just trying to get a guy to stop doing it by hurting him. That's not defense, bro. Yeah. He's like, so yeah, if you play defense today, you might not be the defender you thought you were. So you can't, if you were a fouler defender, you can't really talk a whole lot of shit about defense this year. 
Or oh, by the way, basketball. By the way, if Durant wants to be considered better than LeBron because he beat them in those two finals, remember how he always like, hey, oh, I yeah. beat LeBron twice, forget my yeah. team. Well, by the transitive property, Tatum is a better player than Durant. Oh, right? that's what I wanted to get at too. So like you're a Wu-Tang guy. So you will know, realize this after I say it, but we grew up in the Kung Fu era, Kung Fu movie era. Like we were the tail end of it. Right, tail end, yeah. Like that's why you see all that in rap music back in the day, like in movies like The Last Dragon and shit. Like right. we're the Kung Fu era action movie era. So Kevin Durant just experienced the cliche Kung Fu movie. The student came back and whooped the master's ass. Hmm. Because he is the first generation of middle school players that grew up with Kevin Durant as their favorite player. Yeah. So as soon as he was on that Olympic team, I guarantee you he bit his tongue and was like, yeah, I'll let Kevin Durant have this. But once I see him this year and take his cookies, when we show back up at the Olympics, I'm carrying this team because it should have been me last time. But I will let you have this one. All right. So In Miami, hindsight, that's the way I view it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah. But again, you can't, he, he wanted to be the best then he was on a better team. Like it doesn't work that but, way, Kevin. But I think Kevin Durant, LeBron James and all the elite athletes. And this is a, um, a thing that could come back to bite Giannis if he doesn't pay attention to it eight years from now and the high schoolers and the middle schoolers that watch basketball the last three to five years until they make it to the league is you have to remember you lost your superpowers to some of these people that you used to have superpowers over. So like Jason Tatum, you were a celebrity to him. You lost your celebrity when he got to the league. Then you lost your superpowers this past last Olympics when you won the MVP and the gold medal for the Olympic team, because Jason Tatum got to practice with you every day. So he got to see the nuances to how you practice the nuances to what you look for when you look for it instead of the things you just look for. He knows the cue for when you're looking for it now. You know what I mean? Or like the pace of the game when you start to look for he it. He studied you. Yeah. yeah. So you get to see these things. And then you add in an extra year of maturation where Jason Tatum is still getting bigger, stronger, and faster. And you are not. The only thing you can do is get more skilled and stronger, but you cannot get faster. Right. It's not possible anymore. Yeah. And I don't, he didn't account for any of that. Well, what, what, did, uh, one of my friends said, says the, your strength is your cup. Like the strength that you have in your body allows you to jump and run fast. Obviously you got to do your drills, but it's like, that's your, like, that allows you to do it. He can't make up for lost weight room time. Right. Well, he, he can. Now. But he can continue to get stronger from where he's at. But yeah, I'm but just saying he's the diminishing weight room now. is always there if you want it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Miami, Miami's got Lowry, Butler, Bam, Tucker, who's tough, even though he flops. Um, they're, they're a tough squad. Major they got Spolster. Issue. What? Major issue. Lowry has a hamstring issue. Butler has a knee issue. Uh, now that it's closed, if they don't come back to him 100% healthy, and if they don't get through the next round very easily, that will be the reason they lose in the conference finals. Okay. Because Lowry and Butler will not play by game three of the conference finals if they play every game until then. All right, let's not jump ahead. Most important question perhaps on this entire ordeal here. <laughs> will... Rivers and Harden <laughs> blow a 3 0 lead. Yes, yes, I am on board with it. They will blow it. They will Let's blow it. it. He's going to blow a, the first 3 0 lead. If you had to pick one <laughs> coach from the, our generation and one player from this generation to architect a 3 0 blown lead, would it not be those two? Yeah, most likely. Wow. Like as far I, as far, I, though, yeah. And if they make it, Miami's gonna beat them unless they get injured. But yeah. Embiid's thumb is a concern. Obviously, if Embiid is healthy, I don't think this is a problem. But Only I don't know how bad his thumb is. Stop the Celtics from winning from this point out. 
unless Giannis becomes arguably the second greatest player of all time this year, that's the only way he gets past the Celtics. It's possible. Chris oh, yeah, it's absolutely possible. So um, you're picking the Celtics to win the conference? Yeah, unless they get hurt. They're like oh. Miami like is too banged up now because hamstrings are no joke and they're not the heat or they're not the um, Suns, I mean, where Booker's going to get all the time off he needs, come back at 100%. All like, right, so Celtics. They'll be fine. But the Heat are not the Suns. They're like a 1A, slightly lower level yeah, of it. No. So if Kyle Lowry has to come back early at all, if Kyle Lowry's not 100%, they can't win. Straight up, they can't win. So you're going, you're picking them over to the uh, Sixers or Raptors, though? All right, so you're going Celtics over Heat. And then we got... Are the, are the Suns going to close this out? Yeah. Six or seven? They're just going to outclass them. Like, six or seven. It, now. It's over already. Six. They got to win in six because it's. Now, here's the thing. You know, I'm a Chris Paul guy. 41 points to close out Utah. 40 to make his first conference finals. 41 points to close out He's his former close. team, the Clippers. But what did those games have in common? Not only were they both. One was a game five. One was a game six. He had Harden and Booker there. So when he was getting in his hot streak, they couldn't go and double him. I don't know if he can do that on Thursday because... I don't think that matters because he's too willing of a passer. So he's going to have like... Because they shut him down. He always has one bad game a series. But I'm saying I don't know if he's going to close him out in game six. No, but it's just you got to remember, no matter what he does, even if he was on pace to score 100... People are going to respect his past, no matter who's next to him, because he's established that. Yeah, that's true. Throughout his career, he trust me, he's passed off too many shots in his career. That we know it doesn't matter who's around him. Yeah. As far they're always going to respect the pass. Well, he's got he's averaging twenty and twelve, <laughs> twenty and twelve, and one turnover. So we'll we'll take but that. But yeah, so. that that's yeah. over in six. The Celtics are going to the finals. All right, what about Mavs? Giannis is arguably the second. The Mavs can make a push and scare somebody. I just don't trust them playing on the road when they're they playing. They got. Are they going to close out the Jazz? Yeah, they're going to close out the Jazz, and then they'll never win another. And they're playing the Suns again. Then they're playing the Suns. They got no Booker. I don't care who they play in the playoffs. They're never winning another road playoff game again after this series. They suck on the fucking road. They suck. They're the worst road team I've ever seen in the last five years. Like, well, I want to go see them. I'm going to go travel <laughs> out there and see them. So I, I want to go to a couple of games. So hopefully they close out. They now we suck got on the road. The Warriors and who else? So the, the Warriors look good, but again, they're not playing anybody as far as I'm concerned. But they Grizzlies. need Grizzlies. Like I told Did you. Did you see that Grizzlies need- game? What an amazing game. Yo, the Grizzlies are dumb. They play bad basketball. They have fun. They play inspiring, fun basketball. And Jaw's amazing. But they play really dumb basketball. Like, the Minnesota-Memphis series is cool to watch, but it's like watching the two most athletic, dumbest teams in the NBA. Like, they, they do the dumbest, weirdest things at times. Like the Kings? <laughs> yeah, you do realize the Kings haven't made the playoffs in 17 years now, right? Yeah, because we already did dumb shit back in the 2000s. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> ever since that Page airballed that you, ball. Culture matters. Player development matters. Like, you, like I was saying before, you know what I love about the Warriors? Is that Steph will tell you he needs his teammates and let everybody else argue that he's the best player on that team, the way we go back and forth about Draymond and everybody else. That's the genius about his greatness. Like, you know what I mean? He'll sit there and let, like set up the argument just so everybody gets signed. <laughs> All right, so he, Warriors, he, you're going to go Warriors <laughs> over um, Grizzlies, right? Yeah, Warriors beat the Grizzlies in five. Suns over the Mavericks in five or six? Six? Five. Five. We don't know when Booker comes back. Well, if, oh, if Booker's back, I'm calling sweep on that. Ooh. I'm going to go six just to hedge. All right, <laughs> then we got Warriors and Suns. I'm not going to be able to sleep during that week. That's tough. Like, I, I'd say the Suns, but I want to see what the Warriors build up to. All right, then who are you picking Kaminga, to win the title? Kaminga's starting to look good, man. That dude slashes. Who? Kaminga. But like I said, yeah. I just don't think they're big enough. 
I just don't think they're tall enough. Sometimes I'm not sure if the it's Suns not. are big enough either, but JaVel McGee is, is, a, is a monster. I see what you mean. That's what I was getting at by Valanchunas being but Aiden, more of Aiden's a still an oak tree, man. Aiden's still a, a, a big, strong dude. No, and he's like, got great Aiden touch. Aiden is not a finesse player. It's just every center in the league next to Valanchunas is a yeah. finesse player except I know for Steven mean. Adams. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> So Steven picking, Adams is getting DMPs right now because Carl Anthony Towns is such a bad matchup. So, so don't be like <laughs> Leslie, okay? Leslie picked. I asked Leslie who's going to make it. He goes, he's like, ah, these three teams are. He says someone's from the Eastern Conference is going to win. So I want to, I want a prediction who's going to win the title April twenty seventh. Uh, like the Suns are supposed to win it, but it feels like the Celtics are going to win it. But like, if I'm betting on it, I'm betting on the Suns. But like, like I said, the luckiest team out of the best four win. You saw many people that tried to take away the Suns championship last year. Like, you know, you know how really much happened. I don't love arbitrary statistics. But there's only <laughs> been four teams to ever win um, to to be eight games better than the second place team. Think about it. You have to really assert dominance. Those are. I hear you. That and you know who those teams are, right? These years aren't comparable to historic years because you have the yeah. bubble year and then this year. <laughs> but still, only four times, and you know those four teams, bro. Those are the, you know, I think it was uh, two of the Bulls teams, and so like the best from the from the first three peat, and then the best from the second three peat, and then one of the old school Celtics, and I forget the other one, the '84 Celtics, who were like one of the best teams ever. So, you know, it's so it's. No, but that's what I was getting at by the Suns are just deeper. And what I was getting at when I was explaining how the game is spades, like if they were playing the Bucks, it's like, yeah. So if you play with the two of diamonds, because not everybody plays spades with the two of diamonds is the third highest card. Right. It's like, yeah, Giannis is the big joker if those two teams meet. But you have to realize like Chris Paul and Devin Booker are now the little joker and the two of diamonds. And then Chris Middleton's the ace of spades. But then when you get to the bench – the Suns have all the rest of the spades. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like the spun, the Suns now have the king of spades in Mikel Bridges. You know what I mean? Or no, you might have the king in Drew Holiday, but now they got the queen in Bridges, the jack in the next, like their entire starting line in Aiton. You know what I mean? And then you get to the bench and it's like, oh, now they got every ace in the deck too. Like, so now before we even throw spades to beat, take the book, this dude already has all the aces and two kings. Like, nah, dude, he has six books before we even start playing spades. (laughs) And that's what the Suns are. (laughs) Suns need to hit their open threes. All right. They need to start hitting their threes. Bridges just had a monster game. You know what he reminds me of? Uh, Inspect the deck since you brought up Wu-Tang. He had a line called, he said, uh, I glide like hovercrafts on the Everglades. That's Mikel yeah. Bridges. He glides, man. Like you just get him the ball and he has a step on a guy. He just glides. We're, um, the, in comparison to the Warriors, I would say the Warriors are just stuck with a bunch of middle spades. Like mm-hmm. when you meet the, like you have your Curry and your Draymond, but like I said, those, they're not, they're just spade. Like Curry yeah. is your high spade to go with Booker and them, but then you're just, Clay, Draymond, and that's what I was getting at. They're spades, but they're not the big joker or little joker. Curry's your big joker or little joker. You really joker, love right? that game, don't you? Damn. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just I've heard the comparisons being made before, but like that in sports, that's like that's where people get messed up. That's where like driving the bus is just stupid. It's like there is no bus driver because if you play your hand wrong or this dude's wrong, it's like, no, that ace you had might have been the most important card because you got that book off. You know what I mean? Like, this is a team game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm still going. I'm still going Suns over. I don't know. I keep saying Suns over Bucks. I'm having a hard time sticking with the Bucks, but you know what? going to be the Celtics. In I, I, hindsight, this is where Kyrie Irving looks twice as bad. If the Celtics never have that Kyrie Irving experiment, they were in the finals multiple times already. Dude, they it looked <laughs> so bad. They were better before him and better after him. And in KD... It's almost like they got worse because he was there. Doesn't look good. Harden so doesn't look good. 
I, like Kyrie, Kyrie doesn't Irving look good. was a step back, then they had to take another step back to take three steps forward and get back above water. <laughs> Listen, it would be fitting if 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 Rivers and Harden blow a 3-0 lead same year that the Suns win the first championship. It would be perfect in harmony. I, I just can't let the Celtics get in the way. Now, I'm going to end this episode with the 10 sports commandments. I have said this before. I have not released them yet, but I'm giving them to you <laughs> fresh and live right now. The 10 sports commandments. You know, Biggie had a song. I, I don't, I'm not a drug dealer, but he had the 10 crack commandments. There was also some, um, some religious commandments you might have heard of. So the 10 sports commandments... And there's a semi-order to this, okay? So number one is admitting and owning your bias. This is the hardest one. Nobody can do it. I, I'm getting better at it. Um, you're pretty good at it, but we can always work on it. Admitting and owning your bias. When you root for a team or a player, you're just going to see things through that realm. And I, and I admit it. I'm like, hey, I root against Aaron Rodgers because he's a direct competitor to Wilson or, or Favre. Oh, well. Like, Yeah, I got to show you a conversation I actually just had with Eddie this morning. Oh boy. And I'm not defending Russ at all. I'm talking about how to build this, to run it back. And he's like, why are you defending him? I was like, I'm not defending anybody. I'm telling you how to build this team. Like, uh, like I want to run it back, but it has to be built a certain way. <laughs> like that's just a given. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's doing one of my other things. He's, a, he's assuming and then attacking the assumption. We all do that. <laughs> um, so biases, own it, own it, understand it. Hey, I root. But like I say, like I, like I said, like if you admit your bias and then you say something, then at least people know where you stand. But if you don't admit your bias and you just say the same things, it's like, yo, is that dude, is that dude feel that way for a reason? At least I'm kind of like, hey, I'm owning it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm owning it. And, and like 8 Mile, tell, tell them something they don't know about me. You know, go t- argue the facts, argue the data, argue this, like, go ahead. Okay. So that's one, two. So I'm going to rattle these off video and um, video and game film. Number three, impact on winning. I'm going to write them down. You're going to write them down. All right. Yeah. Bias. Number one, video and game film. Number two, impact on winning and intangibles and bonus points. If you change the game. So you got, you know, Will, Jordan, Steph Curry, bonus points. Four, numbers. The right numbers. You know, I don't give a fuck about triple doubles. Okay? G- give, me, give me 37, 9, and 5, okay? Uh, over a 12, 10, and 10. Um, yeah. And I do, unlike you, I love plus minuses on an overall basis, not like game by game. Yeah. Number five. Longevity and durability. Who would you draft? This includes injuries. So what's the scale? Anthony Davis, not durable, no longevity, unless he turns it around. LeBron yeah. James, never hurt, 19 years. Um, yeah. Six, consistency and peak value. Um, we talk about ceilings and floors. Uh, that makes for a good argument, obviously, for another day. Seven, big game performances. That's like big games toward the end of the year, like like in football. It's like uh, not just big games, right? Sh- <laughs> right, right. Big game, big game performances where you know it's a hey, it's week fifteen and it's for the number one seed or it's for your division yeah. in football or you know just just the biggest games that matter and obviously in playoffs yeah, NBA every NBA matter. game, closeout games, yeah. playoff games in football, you know, playoff yeah. games in baseball. Like you know, we know play in game now. Yeah, playing game. The Lakers <laughs> didn't even make. Embarrassing. Um, and then, and an eight. Notice I wait till eight. Accomplishments and awards from all angles. Your blings, because I always talk about ring privilege and bling privilege. You win a ring, you win an MVP. Your shit don't stink. You get the benefit of the doubt, always. You know, and it's like, yeah, Kyrie's got that ring. Okay, you draft, you drafted him over. I don't know. Dwayne, you know, I don't know, Dwayne Wade, bad example, but you're drafting him over Charles Barkley? Of course not. Of course you're not drafting Kyrie over Charles Barkley. Like, <laughs> right? Like, that, like, like that type of example. <laughs> no, no, you no, are. He's got a Somebody ring. would say that. Yeah. Somebody got more would skills. say that. He's got more skills. Like, yeah. Like, a yeah. lot of people would say that, but it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. 
So, you know, and then when I say from all angles, I mean, hey, okay, all defensive teams, cool. But, yo, like, how about Nash won two MVPs? How many top five finishes did he have? Three. You know, other guys have been in the top five, top seven, top ten, ten times. Nash has been there three. He just happened to win two. It's like, okay, bling again. It's like, no, he's not as good. If you're going to try to argue, like my perfect example, you want to argue Nash is better than Chris Paul? Just say he's a better shooter. He's a more courageous passer. He doesn't flop as much. He doesn't piss people off as much. And he doesn't yell at the refs as much. Like, start yeah. actually like, giving me back examples. To, <laughs> back to rule number one. That's right. your guy. Yeah. Your guy. So, yeah, assuming perfect world, no salary cap, you're starting a team, and that's the guy you're going to pick. But yeah. that's also assuming you can win with 20 different point guards then if you're playing that game. Right. And that's my guy. But at the same time, <laughs> it's like, if you're going to argue against my guy, like say what I just said, I just did it to myself. I was like, say yeah. those things. Don't say the MVPs. The MVPs is not, you're not registering with me. It's like, that's someone else's opinion. It's in one ear at the other. It's like, yeah. And Nash did Nash deserve his MVPs. Those were Kobe and Shaq's MVPs. Okay. Now, number yeah, nine, no, I agree. Number nine, context. Your team, your organization, your era, your conference. Does LeBron make eight straight finals in the West? No. In my opinion, he does not. Okay? But he made them. Does Tom Brady, is Tom Brady lucky? Okay? Not only did he play in a crappy division for two decades, okay, where he gets those extra couple wins and gets the extra buy, right? Yo, Dan Marino left in 1997. Josh Allen pops up. The moment Tom Brady, <laughs> think about it. Like literally he was right in between the future superstar and one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Circumstance, it matters, context. And then 10, your realm. One day at the park, at Rucker Park, who you want to stick with? You know, one day at HealthQuest, you know, yep. one game, one series, one year, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, like, you have to think about that. So then bottom line is those are my 10. And then you look at it like a court case. Who's got the better argument. It helps you with tears. And then sometimes there's no right answer. Like I can't give you with a straight face. Who's a, who was the more dominant basketball player relative to his era, Steph Curry or Jerry West. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but these, you know, I did think of something because you did a while back or a couple weeks ago mention that you were going to do something like this. Yeah. And I don't know where this falls in here um, to reword it better or replace, but right now versus resume or skill versus career, like what are you actually, but you didn't get to play it out combined with, no, I hear you. This dude was really good. And in his peak, there was even a great two years in there. Yeah. But right now, that's not him. And he could play five more years. So like, like, for instance, like Russell Westbrook, we don't know what it is, but he's not what he was before. You know what I mean? So what are you now? But we're not going to dismiss that he was a great player. But there's players he used to be better than that now are over top of him unless something changes, but are they better than him? If they both at the, when they're both retired, not necessarily, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's. And that's where I was getting at. And that's why I always go back to like, when these lists get out of control and it's like, no, like I'm not going to let an injured phenomenal player fall off a cliff because they didn't like, like I said, the NBA got better. A lot more injuries happened. A lot more careers got detoured, but I'm not going igno- to disacknowledge greatness that I saw with my own eyes. And I feel like that type of rhetoric is only reserved for college. Hmm. Interesting. Right? So like, yeah. Your resume and your, <sighs> yeah, that's kind of, it's kind of integrated in there, but yeah, I'll think about that and your skill and yeah, kind of part of the video might be encapsulated there, yeah, but yeah. you know, but it's uh. But, you know, when you start looking at things like you don't you don't have to make it like super, you know, nerdy or accounting wise, but it just helps ground you into 
<clears throat> like, hey, like that, this helps bridge the analytic and eye test like we talk about. It's like, don't get into those fancy formulas. Like, like I got these ideas. It's like, hey, how many twos did you take? What percentage? Threes, your percentage. Free throws, percentage. Because we, we were looking up one night. I was like, yo, look, look at LeBron shooting. Why did LeBron, um, look at LeBron and Larry Bird. It's like, oh, what did LeBron do? He got to the line twice as much. But if you watch yeah, the game, you knew out. that. Yeah, and that thing you showed me yesterday, because I didn't watch the whole game, but it yeah. was like, no, free, th- like as a whole, I came to this realization like three months ago, free throw should never look the same anymore based on the way fouls are called if we're going to reward being um, more aggressive at the rim. But at the same time, yes, you are correct. The NBA could be trying to stretch a series because that does play into it too. And then you combine with the human nature aspect of, I don't care how long you've been reffing, you're still a human being. The crowd, A, a mistake could happen, and B, the fans could be a catalyst to a knee-jerk mistake because you're human, okay? You aren't a robot. I can't go back and find a formula that you were following that is gonna retrace your steps like troubleshooting a broken computer. But the ironic thing is about the game that you mentioned, the very next day, because I didn't see last night's game, and the first thing I heard people talking about was the Suns definitely got more physical, and we were they weren't even talking about free throws. And then I thought about you immediately, and then I was like, yeah, it's weird to me how the Suns have such a good coach, and I'm not saying that facetiously, like I disagree. Like he is a great coach. So going in, and Chris Paul, I'm sure they both said this. Like, yo, you have to really attack the rim in the playoffs because the fouls are going to be called. Like, the refs get jaded more. The league wants more home games. So if you really want to get that out of the way, you have to stay aggressive. You can't step, fall in love with jump shots and threes, especially if the other team is more physical than us to go with yeah. as a whole. It's just data. And, it was just interesting that the team right. down 2-1 – like all of a sudden shot so many free throws. Now there, there's, it's because it's everything. A few things can be true at once. It's like right. maybe they were slightly more physical. Maybe they, you know, wanted it just a little bit more. And then my but old theory. To your point, you no, my, brought in the other two games. Yeah. But again, I didn't check the third game. Yeah, I didn't But check in the either. Memphis game, Memphis adjusted to Minnesota, not the other way around. So yeah. in the first game, Steven Adams got exposed. The second game, he played a little bit, but then by the third game, they finally fully committed to, no, this dude just cannot play this series with Cat. He's bringing him out, and it's not going to work. So they went from pound, pound, pound to shooting more. So again, they adjusted to Minnesota. So therefore, they're not getting their normal free throws because they're shooting more jump shots. Desmond Bain's points per game went up. His shot attempts went up. Why? He's the yeah. better three-point shooter on the yeah. team. And Jaw's like, yeah. not getting to the line if he's passing off those shots to Desmond Bain for three. Yeah, so like most things in life, it's a combination. It's a combination <laughs> of factors, but we both know NBA history. We know what happened in 1993 with the Suns getting yep. 9,000 free throws to make sure MVP Barkley faced uh, about to be three-peated Jordan. We know and the Lakers you had got the one off with the Kings and the, the Lakers. Gambling. The Lakers getting <laughs> 75,000 free throws in the fourth quarter to get to the finals with Kobe and Shaq. We remember that, okay? Yep. And then I have a real subtle theory, and it's that the NBA puts refs who are influenced by human nature and the home crowd, they put that's them in the also game. That's a fact. They that's, want them no, to that's put a known it. fact. Yeah. I don't that's know if it's a fact, fact, but it's, it seems pretty odd. Yeah, so yeah. two things are going on at the same time. When the playoffs start, they eliminate all the refs that are affected statistically by fans the most and leave however the most that they are needed at that point. And then once the top 10, let's say, that are picked that aren't affected by the refs the most, then they manipulate the ones that are affected the most out of the lesser group and put them where they are, the way you just said. So yes, they do it both ways. They at first get the best ones that aren't, but then manipulate it the best ones the way you just said. This way they have plausible deniability. So listen, <laughs> one of, I, I have a feeling that this year is going to prove one of two things. Chris Paul is the John, has the John Elway career, 
or his ancestors or him in a prior life were horrible people. And that is why he has the worst luck of any athlete I've ever seen. And I have to root for him. It's my penance for, for cherry picking Michael Jordan when I was younger. This is what I get. I got to win all those rings. So, um, but yeah, you're both picking the Suns on April 27th. And we are both predicting that the Sixers blow a historic 3-0 lead. Doc Rivers might lose his nickname. Um, I really doubt it, but that is what I'm pushing for. His mama named him Glenn. I'm going to call him Glenn. And do you know how he got his nickname? He got it from wearing a Dr. J shirt. There's only one doctor in Philadelphia. (laughs) And he was wearing his shirt. Yo, you know what's ironic, too, about Philly? Daryl Morey's there. James Harden is his guy. He has Joel Embiid. But... You know what probably would have worked better than Harden? Russell Westbrook. Because Embiid can shoot threes. Westbrook could have played center. Would he do it? I like, I like the could idea. I just... You could have did exactly what you did in Houston without James Harden and had a legit seven-footer on the floor. Harden looks tired. He can't score like he used to. He's, he's a 2010 guy for the rest of his career. He's How'd that happen? Guy, 2010 guy. Did it just happen? It was like too many strip clubs or too many, uh, it just they hit that age. It's life and career. You, like I told you before, he wasn't anointed from day one. So he lived some celebrity years at Arizona State, but it's not like he was like jumping off the board and everybody was picking him and people were talking about him before the draft. He didn't even start. So then he comes in, he was a harder worker when he first got to the league. And then he earned everything and he leaned into it, enjoyed the peak. And now he's just trying to casually, he's trying to be a good professional with some skills that doesn't have to carry a team. And that guy can still be a regular guy and play basketball. It's just now that he's being demanded to be the more mature guy he is now, but the same guy that can drop 50 on a whim. But the problem is, is he's not as quick as he used to be. You can see it because he can't draw that foul anymore because of the rule change. It's not just the rule change that hurt him. That minor step hurt him too. And yes, that step might be there when he got his huge payday, if he leaned into it like LeBron and treated his body like LeBron. And it was like, no, I play basketball during the basketball season. I only vacation in the off season. I invest a hundred thousand dollars into my body every year, but he's not that guy because he wasn't built to only fail from day one when he was born. Like, again, that's where we give LeBron credit for not acting like Kyrie Irving because he actually earned the right to be that way and could get away with being that way. And he still doesn't do it. Greatest player of all time, LeBron or Jordan? Who are you drafting? Oh, I'm picking Jordan. But good. most coaches, if you're building a team or if you're asking it from a GM standpoint, you're taking LeBron. It's got an argument, but I'm still going Jordan. Well, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll go into a deep dive on that one. <laughs> so That was a great episode, Steve. Great talking to you as always. And I really hope the Suns win the title. I will throw us a party at my place when it happens. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you. And all the same to you. And hopefully uh, you end up with the best platform around so we don't have to watch the same people on the main platforms all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll bring you on. (laughs) All right. Yeah, and how about we get multiple people on and do one that's like the up and smoke one and just talk shit the whole time? We can do that. We could do okay. anything. We could do it here on, <laughs> we could do it on Unleashing Truth. We could do it on Raw Sports Debate. We're going to get Leslie on, on Raw Sports Debate. Yeah, but like at me, you, Leslie, yeah. Eddie, and anybody else you can think of and just talk shit. Yeah, I'll just bring my earplugs when some people have to talk, you know. because And then we can even do one that's like a preseason and we can make bold-ass predictions like when I predicted the Lakers to go to the finals. <laughs> Definitely need predictions. We, we need a prediction. We have 10 predictions each. Be great. All right.